Hey everyone, I'm Boxcar the Fox, and welcome back to Don Chorus. So, last we left off, I met this other tiger dude here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right back into it. So, I'm Boxcar, it's nice meeting you too, or get my mic, mic in the right spot. There we go. Torloof points to the spot on the sofa beside me. May I? Hell yeah, brother, come on. Before I have a chance to reply, he sits down beside me, taking a relaxed position again. Wow, he, he is really straightforward. So tell me about yourself. What do you study? Um, I'm from Finland, and I moved here this year. I'm studying cognitive science. Oh, a freshman. How cute. A shame we are not in the same department. A shame indeed. What are you studying then? Experimental biology. But that's not really interesting. What is experimental biology? Hmm, I'm gonna look that up later. Better tell me where I can find you usually. Um, on the campus I guess? I live in a dormitory so I spend most of my time on the university ground. I live further away from the city center. I have my own flat. Hey, you can visit me sometime. You're cute, you know? Oh. Though you have a weird sense of fashion. He winks at me. Oh, fuck, dude. This, this man means business. Am I being flirted with? Uh, yeah, man. I don't think anyone has ever flirted with me before, let alone this openly. I don't even know how to respond to him, so instead I just stare at him. Well, I really am pathetic sometimes. It certainly flatters me, though. He is good looking, I have to admit it. It certainly flattered. Ah, oh, fuck. He has a nice lean body, and his clothes show it off nicely. My gold. Suddenly, another figure enters the lobby. Lake? What is he doing here? He sees us and starts walking in our direction. Hey Torloof, I got your jacket. Oh, hi Boxcar, what a surprise, you two know each other? Now we do, we've just met each other and started chatting. Thank you, Like, you're really invaluable. Like hands him the jacket and a key. Oh, so they are friends. Good enough friends that Tofu sends Lake to fetch him his jacket. Frankly, I don't know much about Lake's friends. When I was visiting him, he always, he was always either alone or with his roommate. We were just going outside for a walk together, but I left my jacket in my room. Yeah, Torloof bumped into me in the corridor and suggested we go somewhere together, and I've been meaning to go for a walk anyway. It's been nice talking with you, Boxcar. I'll catch you later, okay? Uh, sure, have a, have a nice walk, you too. Thank you, Boxcar, see you later. They leave through the entrance door, so I'm left alone in the lobby. Whew. I lean back on the sofa and relax finally. This was really something else. Tor... Torruth. What an interesting guy. That's an interesting name. He didn't really tell me anything about himself, did he? Just that he studies experimental biology and has his own flat. And that he finds me cute. I blush again. Well, he is handsome too. He told me he will catch me later, so should I expect to meet him again? Yeah, probably. I hope it won't be so awkward as our pretty one-side conversation now was. I closed my eyes and let my thoughts wander. For a moment I thought about opening an e-book, but I didn't feel like reading right now. Just a bit too much has happened lately. So until the end of the day, I have to find myself another room to stay in. I could always ask Miko. He for sure would agree, but things still are a bit weird between us, especially after the three year gap in our friendship. I still have the whole day to ask others. I've already managed to make some new friends here, so it could be a good occasion to befriend someone closer. Yeah, I don't have I don't have to make any decisions now, it will leave that for the evening. Hmm, but what should I do now? I god, I can't remember who any of these people are. Uh Klaus Jorn, Jorgen and Travis. Uh, th th 
the Jorgen and Travis, I guess. <coughs> not feeling con not feeling like sitting in the guest house confined by its walls, I exit once again and step outside, taking a lungful of the crisp air. Instead of going into the forest again, I want to walk around the guest house to see it from other angles. Turning right, I start to walk along its wooden walls. I'm still in awe of this building, and it feels like every single detail was carefully thought out. Walking around another corner, I finally see the terrace that Coach mentioned earlier. It's big, bigger than I expected. Half of it is covered in snow, and the other half is hidden under a roof. On the wall there is also a door that leads back to the guest house. Under the roof I see two other students, but I'm only familiar with one of them. Jorgen. Oh, okay, that's Jorgen. And a raccoon I haven't seen before. Okay, so that's why I didn't recognize the other name. Raccoons rarely live in this part of the world. I wonder if he's from here. They're both sitting on a bench standing next to the entrance of the guest house. Jorgen is simply sitting and looking at some point in the distance, holding a book in his paw, while the other student is playing some game on a piled console. <laughs> if they notice me approaching, they do not acknowledge my presence, so I call out to them. Hey there, what are you doing here? Mox Moxcar, so we meet again. Only now I notice that he has a very soft voice and speaks with almost no accent, and there's a certain elegance to the way he pronounces his words. He greets me with a slight nod, while the smaller animal notices me finally and pauses his game. Oh, hello there! I don't think we know e I think we don't know each other yet. So your name is Boxcar, yes? I'm Travis, and I came out here to play. It's nicer staying in here than inside. Yes, that's me. It's nice to meet you too, Travis. You're a raccoon, yes? Are you from here, or did you just move for studies? Oh, I'm not a raccoon. I'm a tan tanuki. Fuck's a tanuki. See this tail? No stripes. He smirks, lifting his long, fluffy tail. No stripes, indeed. I feel stupid now. I, I, I don't even know what a tanuki is, so yeah, I'm right there with you. Don't worry, that's a common mistake. I don't mind. And I was born in the U.S., but my mom is from Japan, so I'm half American, half Japanese. I smile meekly, still feeling stupid over that mistake. He might say whatever he wants, but it's always rude to mistake someone's species. Um... Talk to Jorgen. What is that book you're reading? Jorgen looks at me through his thick glasses from behind his book. It's a novel by... Uh... Sn Snoutgard. A Norwegian writer I really enjoy. He blends... Existentialism with naturalism, and his books are often... Biographical. He constructs... He constructs them through mundane details, but together they create... Coherent portraits of life as a whole. This is often based on the radical self-exposure and self-humiliation he's employed in his books, but this makes it all the more interesting. It was really groundbreaking when it came out. The sheer amounts of mundane details he put into those books is insane, but somehow it all works. Um, okay, sounds fun. I will check him out for sure. Yeah, <laughs> no, I won't. I understand maybe half of what he's saying. Next to him, Travis tries to stifle a chuckle without success. Ignoring us, Jorgen turns his gaze from me back to the book. Right, now I'm at the fragment where he describes in detail how he and his horse friend were taking a piss together in a forest when they were kids. I love how unpoetic and straightforward it is. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that's a bit more than I wanted to know. Jorgen seems really fascinated by what he's reading, though. Actually, he's almost smiling. Almost. Jorgen, you know, I don't think you're really convincing Boxcar. Jorgen gives him a stern look from behind his book. What do you mean? I mean that everything you've said only convinces us both not to pick up this book, like, ever. Yeah, I agree with Travis. 
Don't get me wrong, but he's absolutely right. That just sounds pretentious. Morgan shrugs, going back to reading the book. You know, this book sold half a million copies in Norway alone. That's one book for every nine Norwegian adults. That's your loss then, not mine. I'll leave you now and let you read, though. He is so much into the right now that he barely notices me. Bye, Bakakura. It was nice chatting with you. I waved to them both and returned to the warm, cozy guest house. Uh... Common, common space. Time moves so slowly here. Nothing here changes. Since I returned to the guest house, no one else passed through here. No one entered, no one left. The gray clouds behind the window barely move and it already stopped snowing. If not for the constant ticking of the clock, one could think that even the time stood still here. I find it really comforting. If the time doesn't move, then I don't have to do either. For the first time in God knows how long, I feel like I have all the time in the world. My thoughts are a blanket I wrap myself in. They flow gently like a calm river, coming in the waves, leaving no trace behind them. Suddenly, paw steps break me out of my trance-like state. Was I just falling asleep? I look at the entrance and see Torulf standing there in the glazed corridor looking outside. Against the backdrop of the gray sky, he looks pretty dramatic, like a figure from Casper David's Big Thrich painting. Don't know who that is. <coughs> Excuse me. Without even thinking what I'm doing, I hop onto my paws and start walking in his direction. I was lying up down a bit too long for that apparently though because I immediately start feeling dizzy and my field of vision blurs. I have to lean against a wall and that's when Tor... Tu... To, to Rulf stands around and notices me. Ah, low iron will do that to you, man. Holy shit! Boxcar, you alright? He rushes towards me, grabbing my shoulder and looking at my face with horror. Seeing the frightened look on his face, I get pretty spooked myself, but the absurdity of the situation hits me and I start laughing. Torruf looks at me with immense confusion and I laugh even harder. Are you feeling well? Do you have a fever or something? I finally recompense myself and take a step back. Sorry, I just got up too fast. And here I rush to the rescue, gravely concerned about you. He shakes his head, looking at me with disappointment. What are you doing here, Boxcar? Well, I don't really have anything to do, so I was just relaxing on a couch before I saw you here. He looks at me suspiciously. <laughs> Unacceptable! Unacceptable! We have to find you something to do, then. Do you want to tag along? Oh, this could be fun. Or at least sounds more interesting than lazing around the whole day. That I can- that I can do anywhere at any time. Sure, what do you have in mind? Actually, not much, I'm pretty bored myself. I came here to look at the scenery, hoping that I could maybe find something here by accident. And look, here you are. Well, that's disappointing. Hey, sorry, I don't have some great plan prepared. I didn't think I'd need to come in here with one. Hmm, we could always just sit here in the lobby. Wouldn't it be better to go sit in a room? Actually, why are you sitting here instead of in your room? Oh wait, I know. Why don't we go to the common space? I think that there's a recording player there. A record player. Ugh. Hmm. I haven't noticed it, but then I didn't really look at it before. I'm glad he didn't wait for me to answer because I don't really like feel like explaining it all again. Good idea, why not? Great, let me lead the way then. Torulf walks a few steps ahead of me, not looking back if I follow him. By the way, to anyone f that happens to watch this sometime in the future, if you're from anywhere, Finland, Sweden, Norway, anywhere there, I apologize about butchering these names. I live in the middle of bumfuck America, so I don't exactly have an experience with those pronunciations. For a moment, I think of staying behind a corner to see if he would even notice, but what would I even prove by doing that? Ooh. Fox art. Two fox art. We move into the common space. 
went past it a few times before, but I never paid much attention to it. It's divided into two parts, with the snooker table in the separate room, and a few armchairs and couches arranged in the table around the others. There's also a record player standing there in the corner. It's definitely an old one that fits the room very well, adding, to a, lot of char adding a lot of charm to it. There's also a fireplace that certainly adds to the coziness. It's obvious that a lot of attention was put into designing this space. Mm-hmm, I like it here. He sits down on the sofa and points to the space next to him, clearly expecting me to sit there. Yeah, I'll sit next to him. I take the spot next to him reluctantly. We're so close to each other that I'm almost snuggled up against him. He has been nothing but nice to me, but it still feels a bit weird. It's the second time we're seeing each other and I barely know him. It feels like our friendship progressed much faster on his part than on mine. It's quite hot in the room with the burning fireplace, but I especially feel it now, sitting next to Torul... Torulf. I take my sweater off and throw it into the armrest before turning back to the tiger. Torulf? Tell me something about yourself. So far, I only know you do study and where you live, and it doesn't really say anything about you as a person. Torulf nods and lifts his finger in a stopping gesture. Sure, but first let's play some music. Some of the albums are already scattered on the table on which the record player stands, and Torulf leans in and takes a better look at them. They have some good ones here. Do you have any preferences? Oh, they have the new Nimble Foxes album. I've listened to them a lot lately. Hell yeah. I have an idea, though. Let's pick something neither of us knows. Ooh. Fine by me. Maybe this one? He picks one of the albums. It has a white cover with a tiger sitting on an orca-shaped rock among flowers looking at a sunset. It's vivid and colorful, but at the same time feels comp contemplative in a way. This cover art looks interesting. Building like radiators, a weird name for a band. Do you know them? Nope, never heard of them. Okay, let's try this one then. He takes the black record out of the sleeve and puts it on the record player. The first notes in the track play from a small wooden speaker standing on both sides of the player. Soft acoustic guitar that fits this space well. Record players have their charm. I haven't seen one in a long time. There was one trendy jazz cafe in Helsinki that had one. I've been there twice, and that was the last time, probably. I've heard people like likening the vinyls to analog photography, but I think the comparison misses the point. With analog photography, the focus is on medium and its limitations, and the end result is usually visibly different than from digital photography. But it's not really the case with analog records. I don't agree that they sound vastly different unless a record is scratched or dirty, but with vinyls and the focus on the ritual itself. Admiring the album cover, taking the record out of its sleeve, cleaning it first properly, then dropping the needle and observing how the vinyl record revolves on the plate. It's much more absorbing than just playing a song on... Stri Strivify. <laughs> like the comparisons these people make. So, what would you like to know? Hmm. Maybe tell me more why you chose to study experimental biology. Yeah. Oh, that's a complicated story. So I'll start by saying that I first got a bachelor's degree in computer science. Hell, right along with you, brother. And worked for a few years as a web developer. Okay, that's not... I do cybersecurity, but close enough. I got the first job when I was still studying, but when I got my degree, I was offered a much better position elsewhere. I accepted it, of course. Everything was going well, I was earning more than I ever hoped for, and while doing less than I thought I would have to. But I'm not the first one to ever- but I'm not the one to ever stay in one place. After the second year there, I started to feel bored of it all. It never was a thrilling job, but for a while I liked what I was doing. I couldn't see myself doing the same thing for the rest of my life, though. After two years of working, I had enough money saved to quit and just live off the savings for a while, for a long while. I don't know if you've ever heard of the term mini-retirement, but that's pretty much what I did. I retired, just not permanently. So I found myself having a lot of time to think some stuff through and decide what I want to do with my life. And I understood that I wanted to do something more substantial. I wanted to be at the forefront of science. I wanted to work on something groundbreaking. 
something actually meaningful. So after some research, I decided to go with experimental biology. That's pretty much it. Not very interesting, was it? Wow. That's a lot of new facts. I thought you'd maybe a year or two older than me, but that would mean you're 24? 26, actually. I've finished my studies, worked for two more years, traveled around the world for a year, and then ended up here. You've traveled around the world? Where were you? Mostly Asia. China, Taiwan, Thailand, Vietnam, Japan, Korea. Those countries really fascinate me because they're highly developed, but the culture is so much different. I never felt at home there, but somehow it all kept coming back. Hey, how about we get a bit more comfortable? He puts his arm- oh, he puts his arm around me and snuggles me against himself. It's so sudden that I don't even protest. Although, I have to admit it feels nice. His intentions are pretty clear and I don't know what to think of it yet, though. He certainly is a handsome tiger, but not only I- But not only I just met him today, he's a lot older than- He's older than me by a lot more than I expected. Which might be hot, actually. Oh! Oh! Also a lot... Bigger there. Cause this is him, right? Yeah, cause that's pink hair. I'll worry about that later. I lie down sideways on the sofa, wrap my arm around him, and rest my head on his chest. He, he in turn snuggles me up closer and pets my head with his other paw. This is nice. I could probably spend a whole day like this. I can hear a deep rumble rising from his chest, looking like he's enjoying himself too. Oh, he's oh purring. Yeah, they're cats. I press my snout against his chest. He smelled really nice and fresh with no hint of musk. He certainly takes care of himself and it shows. My paw runs along his side, slowly exploring his body. I've never cuddled like that with anyone before and now I want more. I wrap my arms around him and hold, and hold on to him closely while he keeps petting my head. His other paw snuggled, snuggling me into myself. The final record keeps revolving, the tiny needle making laugh after laugh through the black grooves. The speakers fill the room with a mellow sound of guitar and occasional pops and cracks of the record. Torulf presses the tip of his snout against my head. His warm breath tickles my skin. <laughs> You're cute, you know that? Yeah, you told me already. My words come out muffled by his fur, but I don't care. I don't want to let go of him. A flame flickers in the fireplace, illuminating the room with a warm glow. I don't even care if someone else sees us. It feels like we're the only two creatures in this whole world. This room is the only place that really exists. I cling to this moment with my whole consciousness. Uh-oh, fade to black. He smells so nice. Oh, it's... Rune! Boxcar. How are you doing? Are you happy to be here? Wait, what? Oh, he fell asleep, I think. This is so fascinating. Can you feel it? Everything around us is alive. I could sit here all day and marvel. I'm glad you're here with me, Boxcar. Do you want to see where the path will take us? He grabs my car and starts pulling me in deeper into the forest. I close my eyes and follow him blindly. I open my eyes. There's a wooden ceiling above me. I look around, disoriented. I'm in the common space. The wood in the fireplace is still burning and the evening sun pours through the windows. I must have slept for only a few minutes. Slowly I start remembering why I'm here. Looks like Torulf is gone already. I stand up, stretching out and yawning. I really need that- I really needed that nap. I feel much more rested and energized now. I notice my sweater still laying on the armrest. I picked it up and put it back on. The vinyl is still revolving on the record player even though the album has ended. 
Looks like it's a fully manual model. I lift the tone arm and put the record back in its sleeve. I leave the common space and start walking back into the lobby to stretch my legs. I wonder where Torulf went. I never asked him about his room number. I wouldn't even know where to look for him. I'm sure we're going to bump into each other again soon. Uh... Let's do the swimming pool. So that's Rune. It's Deer McGee. Swimming pool. Rune told me to look for him and Devon there. I haven't been in one in ages. It's really cool that our guest house has one. I didn't expect such luxuries when I first heard about this camp. Looks like there's a joint locker room for both the sauna and swimming pool, which is pretty common. Boxcar! Rune is standing in the locker room shirtless. Oh. He smiles even when he sees me enter, raising a paw to greet me. I stop in my tracks, standing in the locker room door, not expecting to walk on a buff, bare chest bug here. What? See something you like? Oh, his face! Oh. He leans on a locker teasingly. God damn it, please just don't get a nosebleed now. <laughs> um, hi there, Rune. Hey, don't be so serious, I'm just messing with you. He winks at me and continues to undress, taking off his trousers. Oh. Felt like swimming a few laps with us? Devin is already inside if you're looking for him. Uh... That coach is older, that, that'd be weird. Uh... Yeah, I came to see Will. I was looking for you. I thought maybe we could do something together. Peer in a locker room? What do you mean by that? Something. Uh... Swimming? Mostly? Mostly, you say? Hey, don't look at me like that, I'm still just joking. Are you, though? Are you? Okay, I can wait for you. Unless you mind. I get a bit flustered at the thought of Rune watching me undress, but it's not like he wouldn't see me almost naked in the pool anyways. No, feel free to. I picked a free locker and put the jacket inside, hanging on a hook. Wait, isn't that still- Don't we still have his jacket? Isn't that his jacket we're hanging in there? I took my shoes off at the door and went in bear pods, so now I put on the- I put them on the bottom of the locker. Only now I notice a distinct smell of chlorine that hangs in the air heavily. As I take a full lungful of it, I'm instantly flooded by a wave of memories from various swimming pools and locker rooms I've been throughout my life. This one is fairly small, which is to be expected for a moderately sized guest house, which is just around 15 lockers and two rows and two benches between them. Two of the lockers are taken by Rune and Code, so it must be the only three of us in here at the moment. I take off my shirt and trousers, folding it neatly and putting, a, putting on a shelf inside a locker. And then a sudden reali realization hits me. Oh? I look at Rune, who is doing some warm-up exercises, changed into swimwear already. He notices me looking and turns in my direction. What's up? I don't have any swimming shorts. Damn. Well, I do, but back at my room, that doesn't help me much at the moment. Hmm. Oh, d a, a devious smile appears on Rune's snout. I don't see a problem. There's no one besides us here. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Are you suggesting... Oh. Well, why not? Hmm. It's good to do something crazy once in a while, and, as Rune said, there's no one here besides us now anyway, so no one will probably... And no one will probably come so soon before dinner. Ah, what the hell. I take off my underwear and throw it into the locker on the top of the rest of my clothing. For us Finns, nudity is not something uncomfortable or weird. In fact, it's a normal part of our lives. Really? I'm not sure if it's the same for Norwegians, but the fact that Rune even proposed it now would suggest so. The fuck are they doing in... Finland and Norwegia? Or Nor- Fuck. Norwegian. <laughs> Norway that they're fucking getting naked on the regular. 
I closed the locker, leaving the key inside the lock. Okay, ready now? Let's go. I nod and follow him into the showers. The tiled floor feels cold under my paws, so I hasten my steps to match those of Rune. There are no separate stalls, just one row of shower heads extending from the wall, as a normal shower is. We take two adjacent showers, I press the button and water starts pouring onto me. Oh, it's my roommate's making a little bit of noise. Dark, it's cold! Next to me, Rune has started showering too, rubbing liquid soap into his thick pelt. I know what everyone's gonna want me to click. So I'm gonna click it. The water could be warmer, but I don't want to miss the views while I can enjoy them. Discreetly, I take another curious glance at Rune, this time less concerned about being caught. There's nothing inappropriate in admiring such a physique anyway, is there? His fur clings to his body soaked in water, which only makes the outlines of his muscles more prominent. He's really well built, he must work out a lot and it definitely shows. There's not much fat on him, but enough to make him look more bulky than ribbed. The white fur on his belly looks so smooth and soft. I look up at his snout. I don't know how old he is, but he looks if he was no older than me. His antlers give him a distinguished look. I wonder how it would be to have a pair. I for sure would have to give up wearing sweaters. <coughs> Rune, towards, Rune turns towards me and our eyes meet for a split second. And we both look away. Was I just imagining things or was he trying to take a peek at me too? Hey, were you just checking me out? Oh, caught. So I was caught. Yep, got him. Hey, don't get all flustered again. It's flattering. Yeah, you do look great. I wish I had your build. I'm all skin and bones myself. Got a bit lucky with my jeans, but I put in a lot of work in myself too. Thanks, box guy. Oh! Look at them cheeks, brothers. And you look good too, you know. You're lean, not scrawny. You don't need to be ripped to be sexy. You're a handsome tiger. Oh. I blush under my fur. It feels nice to get a compliment from someone like Rune. Although, when you're blushing like that, I should say rather cute. Oh! I can feel my cheeks getting even hotter. I think I preferred handsome. We both finish showering and step out of the showers. My fur feels heavy with all the water it soaked up under my under the shower, but I don't bother doing anything with it. I'm jumping into the pool in a moment anyways. I leave the showers, leaving a trail of wet paw steps behind me. Okay, and I think I'm going to stop this here, so thank you everybody for watching. I'm happy. I've actually gotten some comments on this. I'm happy you guys are enjoying this, so I'm going to keep going. Um... And that's really all I would say. If you want to check out some of the previous videos, feel free to check out my channel and find those. And feel free to check out some of my other stuff I do. It'd make me a real happy fox if you did. And, you know, if you want to stay up to date on whenever I do more episodes of this, you know, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that other stuff other YouTubers tell you to do. And, with all that being said and done, stay foxy and take care.